here it goes. Okay. Here's my story. Good for me. Yeah. Yeah, it's good for me. B16. <laughs> Be oh. black and have a family down in Alabama. They farm and own a huge amount of land down in Huntsville. Uncle owns a big house and a bunch of trailers they put up out in the woods for hunting or camping. Down South cousins suggest that we go there to camp. No, I'm a city kid from Chicago, so they tease the fuck out of me, collect food, kill a pig and some chickens, and bring necessities to camp out for a few days. We get to the camp, and it's obvious something's weird. Yeah, it's right to cry, dog. Exactly. <clears throat> the air has this weird electric smell, like right before a storm, like ozone. We think nothing of it and unpack and go down to a little creek to swim for a few hours. All of a sudden, some older white guy and a white teenager come out of the bushes. He has a shotgun in the crook of his arm and says, hello, and asks us what we're doing this far back in the woods. I tell him about my uncle, who he knows, and say we're camping out. He tells us that we need to be real careful out here and stick together because there was a big animal in the woods. His son, who's my age, asks if he can stay and hang out with us. And he says, okay. Now, I'm going to stop green texting here because the story is fairly long and the format is harder to write in. So we end up playing football, dicking around with me, and there's this white kid, Tanner, five of my cousins, and then four of their friends. In total, there were five girls and six boys. We were all around 15 or 17. We ended up just dicking the day away, so we head back to the camp and pulling out some stuff for a campfire, even though the trailers both had kitchenettes. Tanner says that his family's property sits up against my uncle's. He wants to run home and ask his dad if he can come out camping with us. My cousin Rooster says he's going to go with him since it's going to get dark soon. And the girls also wants to tag along. It's about 7 o'clock, and it's starting to get pretty dark. They take flashlights and take the trail toward Tan's property. The rest of us chill. We make s'mores, drink, kiss on the girls. <clears throat> about 30 or 40 minutes later, there's the smell of ozone again. You could smell it over the smell of the fire we'd started. This really nasty, coppery smell, like right after you had a nosebleed and it stopped. It wasn't exactly like dried blood, but it was that nasty, metallic, back-of-your-throat smell. We immediately think it's some kind of electrical malfunction or someone left a hot plate on or some shit. We search the trailers and nothing is on. And we can all smell it. All of a sudden, we can hear people booking down the path towards us. And Rooster, Tan, and the girl all come running into the clearing out of breath. And they don't even break stride. They all run into the trailer right by where the fire is. We all get the fuck out of there and into the trailers. They end up calming down. Even Rooster is crying his fucking eyes out at this point. All the while, the fire is guttering lower and lower. So my cousins say, fuck it, and are about to go outside to get the generator out of the shed between the trailers. Tanner goes, fuck no, lock the front door. Ain't nobody else going outside. He's been crying too, and his eyes are bloodshot and puffy, and his pants are dirty as shit. He goes on to tell us that they went up to his house. His father said, sure, he could go out camping, but to make sure they were careful on the way back, and that maybe they should take one of the hunting rifles just in case. Evidently, Tanner had seen something in their yard a few days before. One of their pigs had come up, ripped up and half eaten. They assumed it was just some big cats or coyotes, even though they don't usually fuck with live animals. He'd gone upstairs and packed his stuff and told his dad they would be okay without the rifle because coyotes avoid people. So they walked back toward the, where they could see us camping. <clears throat> So Rooster finally stops crying and shaking. The girl already had, but she was just staring out the window with a dumb look on her face. He says they'd gotten halfway into the woods toward the camp when they started to hear shit in the forest. It was almost pitch black by this time, so they weren't sure at first what the fuck it was. The girl says that she heard something in the bushes right off the trail. And they all beamed their flashlights over there, and there was someone standing back in the woods in a little hollow. Rooster said they shouted at him and told him he was scaring the fuck out of them and what a dick he was. And he says that's when he realized that the guy was facing away from them. So they keep walking and they start smelling this nasty coppery ozone smell. They said they look off in the forest on the opposite side and it's a dude standing in the forest backward, slightly closer to the path. So now they start power walking and Tan keeps going, I should have taken the fucking rifle. As they're telling the story, the smell is still super strong even inside the cabin. They say that after they started walking faster, a kind of low gibbering had started coming from both sides of the wood. And as they started booking it back to the trailer, the girl said she had flashed her flashlight out into the woods to the side of them and had seen something jerking itself through the woods. The gibbering just got louder and louder, and when they could see the light from our campfire, something had come out of the woods about 40 yards behind them onto the track, and they just flat out ran as hard as they could into the trailer. So... We are out in the fucking woods, 
And we're assuming at this point it's some rednecks or some shit trying to fuck with us. All of a sudden, my other cousin, Junior, starts going on about how he went to school with a native kid that was telling him about the goat man or some shit. We promptly tell him to shut the fuck up because we don't need any spooky talk right now. But he just keeps going on and on about how it's the fucking goat man and how we're in the, his woods and blah, blah, blah. Now, at the time, I'd never heard of this goat man or any of that, but then a couple years later, a year before I graduated college, I had some Native American guy for a roommate. I ended up asking him about it. And to sum it up, it's basically a fucking man with the head of a goat. And he can shapeshift as he gets among groups of people to terrorize them. It's also supposed to be kind of like the Wendigo, and it's bad mojo to even talk about it, and even worse if you see it. Keep in mind, I didn't know this back when I was 16, so my cousin's going, the goat man's going to get in and fucking get us, and the girls are all terrified, and my cousins and I are all fucking trying to figure out if it's just some hillbillies or if it's some animal, so all of a sudden, the smell just goes away. Like, to this day, I haven't experienced anything like it. Like, usually smells fade away or lessen. It, it just literally was there one second, and then not the next so it's after an hour making it around nine or ten we stopped shitting bricks enough to go back inside and outside and stoke the fire again we figure it's just some assholes trying to fuck with us so we don't go back home because we think if we do they'll chase us through the woods or some crazy shit nothing else happens that night and we stay another night and for the main part of the night nothing happens but at around one in the morning we're outside getting drunk and telling ghost stories you know, it's the thing, the smell comes back. It's so fucking strong that one of the girls literally starts vomiting. I stand up and you can actually feel how clammy the air is. I, I say we should get inside. This is right. We should have just fucking left. We all go back inside and we're standing around. My cousin just keeps going on about how it's the fucking goat, man. My cousin Rooster tries to shut him the fuck up and all the while I'm just feeling that something is wrong and I can't figure out what the fuck it is. We end up sitting there for a while. The smell is just as strong and we're terrified and all huddled in this camper. We end up cooking brats for everyone because nobody wants to go outside. It, it's one of those packs with four brats. We have a total of three packs. I grill them on the stove, give everybody a hot dog, I get mine. After a while, one of my cousin gets up and goes over to the pot to get another one. He starts grumbling about how I get two brats and everybody else only got one. And I look at him like he's fucking stupid. I tell him that everybody got one because there were only 12 brats. If he wants more, he should open up a new pack and cook some more. That's when the girl that had been out with Rooster and Tan just starts screaming, Oh, Jesus, oh, Lord, get it out. She's crying and shivering. And then it dawns on the cousin standing up what the fuck is wrong. Me and him both glance around the room, and then I feel my heart fucking sink. I run the fuck out of the cabin, and the girl runs out with us. The trailer door is banging against the side of the trailer as everybody books it out of the cabin. One of my cousin's friends asks us what the fuck is wrong, and I start counting of us. I start counting us. <clears throat> There's only 11 now. I shit you not, my cousin verified. There had been 12 people in the cabin. But being that everybody didn't really know each other well, nobody had really noticed the whole fucking time that there was an extra person. And then I realized earlier that I'd kind of noticed something was off. You know how when you're just dicking around, having a good time, that you don't sweat the smallest shit and you don't always keep track of certain stuff? Well, I'm, I'm dead sure that someone else had been in the trailer with us, that they had been there for at least a fucking day eating with us. What makes it worse, I could figure out which one, I couldn't figure out which one because I don't think anyone ever actually interacted with the other person, the goat man. The girl kept praying to Jesus and we're all sitting outside. Eventually we get a big ass stick and go back in the cabin, but there's nobody there. So we count again and there's 11 people. We go back into the trailer and lock the door. We explain what the fuck happened and the girl says that she realized too and that when he was about to say something, the person sitting next to her had grabbed her leg hard and leaned over toward her and said something she couldn't understand. So, we're pretty much scared as fuck as we huddle together and I fall asleep. When I wake up, the sun is just coming up and half the people are asleep and the other half are packing our shit up. <clears throat> we all want to walk back home, but like four people want to stay until the sun is all the way up. And some people think that we're just fucking around and still want to stay in trailers. I just want to get out of the fucking woods. The girl's name, by the way, was Kira, the one that the goat man had touched 
Anyway, I asked her if she really thinks it was something bad, and she just says that she wants to go home, and she doesn't want to be out in the woods alone for another night. So, we decide to split up. The four that want to go can go, but I have to stay because I have the keys to the cabin, and it's my uncle's, and I have to lock up, and I'm super pissed at this point because I feel like people aren't taking this shit seriously, and I definitely didn't want to be out in the woods for another night. I spend the rest of the day trying to convince the rest of the people, now four girls and four guys, to get the fuck out of Dodge. Tanner leaves with them to go get a rifle and says he's going to be back. So there are just seven of us left by 4 p.m. It's about, uh, at around 5 p.m., he hasn't made it back yet, and we're getting extremely fucking antsy. The only reason I stopped begging him to go back was because he went to get a gun. It's about 5.30 p.m. or so when the one cousin that did stay says that the girl Kira is outside. We all look outside and sure enough, she's standing by the fire pit with her back to the cabin. Now I'm thinking to myself, if she was so fucking scared, why the hell would she come back? And then I get this nasty feeling in my gut. Keep in mind the whole time the coppery smell has been gone, but now I realize I can smell just a twinge of it. I say this to the rest of them and everybody, and, and these are the people that wanted to stay in the fucking woods. Everyone is laughing at me and asking if I set this up to scare them. I'm looking at them like I'm not fucking bullshitting you at all right now, and I ask them why the fuck would I play like that. So one of the girls goes outside to get Kira. She gets halfway to her and stops cold. Kira starts heaving. I don't know how the fuck to describe it. Sort of like if someone with their back turned was laughing without actually making a sound. It was this fact that made me realize there was not a fucking sound in the whole woods. It was dead silent. So I step out the door and tell her to come back in the fucking trailer right goddamn now. She backs up into the trailer and we lock the fucking door. We pull down all the shades except one and put a guy there in a chair to watch her. She stands there for another 20 minutes, and the guy turns to say that she's still there, and there's a huge fucking bang on the door. We all jump the fuck back and scramble around the living room of the trailer. The banging is super fucking loud, so now my cousin is holding one of the girls, and the other two are kind of giggling with nervous laughter, and me and the other two guys are shitting bricks, and then we hear Tan, and he's screaming, let me the fuck in, stop fucking playing. So we go over to the door and open it, and he stumbles in with a rifle, and there's nobody else outside. Evidently, he had walked up to the campsite. Nothing weird happened in the forest, but he'd seen a girl. Mind you, he said it was not Kira standing there. When he'd gotten to the edge of the clearing, she had turned toward him with a slack-jawed look and just stared him down, slowly tracking him as he walked around the campsite of the clearing towards the camp. He said it wasn't until he was almost halfway to the trailer he had realized that she was getting closer to him. She had started off by the fire, and without him even seeing her move, she'd been turning, inching closer. He said he just ran the rest of the way back to the cabin, thinking it would open, and when he got to the door and it was locked, he turned, and it was about half the distance to the door. He looks around the room and then gets super pale. He pulls me to the side and whispers in my ear, you know there are only seven of us in here, right? I get that feeling where your stomach drops into your nuts. Uh, it had been back inside the trailer while we were sorting out who was going where. And then when we all went outside to talk earlier that day, it had just slipped right back in. We looked out the window and there's nobody out there. So we recount everyone and then basically I go over and ask everyone how many people were here earlier and everyone says eight. And I say, well, how many are here now? They all do the count and then realize there are now only seven people in the cabin. So Tan had brought back a couple of boxes of ammo in his rifle. He told us, his dad, he told his dad that there was some kind of animal in the forest because he didn't think his dad would believe him if he said it was the goat man. He says that his cousin is supposed to be coming down in a few hours and that in the morning we can all go back to his place and his cousin will drive us home. Now I'm really fucking terrified, but at least I feel better because we can be American and shoot the fuck out of whatever it is that comes back. But then... 
my cousin gets into this huge argument with one of the girls because she thinks I'm trying to be funny and prank them and she's getting really scared and that I'm not funny and he keeps telling her that I'm not that kind of person and she says, well, how do we know the girl wasn't just Tanner in a wig? Or if it's really the goat man, how do we know that it, this is the real Tanner and that goat man didn't just kill Tanner in the woods and take his gun? So we get into a huge fucking argument about this where me and Tanner are like, we could seriously be in danger because at the very least, someone has been sneaking themselves into our fucking trailer without us knowing and mingling with us and at worst, something bad is in the forest fucking with us. So one of the girls is crying and saying she wants to go right now and we're trying to tell her that she shouldn't because none of us are walking through the woods in the middle of the night. At this point, the sun is starting to go down and it's getting a little cloudy out. So we eat something and turn on the radio for a while, but we can't really get a station out there, so we turn it off. And about that time, Tan's cousin shows up. He was like 19, I think. At this point, the sun is just barely over the horizon. He has one of those heavy-duty lantern flashlights and another rifle. He walks up the trailer, and we whisper to Tan, asking, hey, are you sure that's your cousin out there? And he says, yes. So the guy looks behind him and all around the camp, then walks in, and he kind of glances at us and looks a little confused. And he says, well, where's your other little buddy at? I figured she would meet up at the cabin. Is she a little slow or something? He also asked whether we'd been cooking blood in the cabin because it smelled like blood and hot pans all the way up the trail. And we were like, fucking nope. But we ask him what the fuck he's talking about and who this girl is. Oh. Spooky. <laughs> Did not like that. Spooky. He had come down the same trail Tan had been using and he had come up on one of you guys' buddies standing in the middle of the trail looking at him slack-jawed and he asked a bunch of questions but all she did was just look at him and then she smiled at him and he said he kept walking she couldn't seem to keep up with him and kept lagging a little behind he said he asked her if she was hurt or something and if she needed any help but she had continued to stare Eventually, he'd been walking around and turned around a bend in the trail, but when he turned around and went back to see if she was okay, the trail was empty. He assumed she'd just taken some shortcut through the woods. We tell him the whole story of what's been going on, and I half expected him to say we were full of shit, but he just listened and then sat down on the couches in the living room. Tanner's cousin gets back to the girl. He says when she had kept trying to lag behind him, he kind of weirded him the fuck out so he tried to keep her in front of him but no matter how slow he walked she was always lagging a little behind and then he smelled this nasty smell the stronger uh, as it got stronger as he got towards the camp eventually got really strong and she had said something really low that he didn't catch and when he turned around she had been right the fuck up on him oh and he stepped back from her. It was at this point he asked her if she was okay, and if she wasn't, if he wanted her to carry her back the rest of the way, but she just kept staring. He said he reached out for her, as in to grab her on the shoulder, but he must have misjudged the distance because she was off to the side of where he put his hand, like she had moved while he was looking dead at her. So, at this point, we all know this shit's real, unless Tan is playing a joke, which we can tell he's not because he's almost pissing his pants. So they load up their rifles, and we eat some more, and we just kind of sit around until about 11. To this fucking day, every time I think about this, I really pray to God that it's some huge prank that my cousins played on me and just never revealed, so I would shit for the rest of my life. Because at around 11... The stink of copper turns into an actual nasty, gross, blood-like smell, like cooking blood and singed hair. Tan and his cousin Reese get the fuck up instantly and grab the rifles. There's like a half knocking, half clawing at the door, and I shit you not, there's this voice. And it, and it sounds like when you see those YouTube cats and dogs whose owners teach them how to talk, it says in this halting, weirdly toned voice, let me the fuck in. Stop fucking playing. 
It made my nuts creep up against my body, and one of the girls just starts crying and calling on Jesus. It was so fucking obviously not a person talking. It, it didn't have the right cadence, and that's some shit that I never really realized until that moment, but all people have a certain cadence when they talk, no matter what language, all people have a certain kind of rhythm to talking. And this shit didn't have any kind of cadence, didn't have any kind of rhythm. One of those YouTube cats, that's what the fuck it sounded like outside the door. So now I'm in full on terror mode and we keep yelling, who is it? Stop fucking around, man. And it just keeps saying in or let me the fuck in for about 15 minutes. So then smell goes away for a while and for the next hour or so, you can hear someone basically creeping around in the woods and shit. Every couple of minutes, it'll come back to the door and say something. And finally, when the smell fades away, it's around two in the morning, and Reese says, man, fuck this, and opens the door and walks outside with his rifle, and he fires a shot into the air and says something to the effect of, in the name of Jesus Christ, go away! He fires two more times, and then from the woods, right up against the river, across the trailer, it sounds like something is slowly gibbering and hooting. And then it starts screaming. And it sounds almost like a woman and a cat in a bag screaming together. Like, seriously, I have never heard any shit like that. And you can hear the brush over that way start to shake. Reese fires over into the tree line and then starts backing into the house. We lock the door and we can hear the shit keening and screaming. Reese says something had come out of the bushes super low to the ground, crawling toward the cabin, and he'd shot at it. And pretty much... That was how the rest of the night went. It was literally screaming constantly for the next two hours, and we could hear shit moving out into the tree line, but it never came back up to the cabin until everyone had finally fallen asleep. Tan had been sitting in a chair watching the door with his rifle. Nobody else heard or saw this, and he told me two days later after the whole thing was over. Oh my God. He's actually that, that's a ghost. That's sure a ghost. He, um, <clears throat> he said he'd been nodding off after the screaming noises finally stopped. And he'd almost been asleep when he saw someone come out of the bathroom and then lay down in the middle of the floor to go to sleep. He just assumed it was one of us and he nodded off. Damn. And then he said um, that he kind of realized something was wrong. And while pretending to be sleeping, he counted us. There were nine people in the cabin. He basically didn't want to try to shoot at the fucking thing in the cabin and have it kill us all right then and there. Or have Reese wake up and start shooting, and then we kill ourselves. So he just stayed awake all night, pretending. <laughs> You're a piece of shit. You told me to do it. Not then. Go away. Spooky. 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 He said. Uh, <laughs> no. Continue. He stayed awake. Let's take it back. He stayed awake all night, pretending to be asleep. Like Patrick. He said sometimes it would stand up and kind of do this weird jittery thing. Oh. Or heave like it was laughing. But then it would lay back down. The, uh, the story closes pretty weak because from my perspective, nothing happened. We woke up, I noticed that Tan was a little jerky and that he was avoiding looking at all of us, but we ate some breakfast, packed up, and started walking to his house. He stayed last in the cabin and said he'd lock up and bring my uncle's keys to just start walking and he'd catch up, which I didn't really want to fucking do. We got a little bit up the path when he came running up, basically just jogged back to his house. His, his cousin took us home. There was a window in the bathroom. Tan had gone back to lock up and looked in there. We were too stupid to lock a screenless window. The window was fucking up when he went in there. I'm guessing it had been doing that all along. 
waiting for us to fall asleep or slip up and then getting in among us. It walked with us all the goddamn way back to his house. And then he said, it lagged behind to the back of the group and looked him dead in the eyes before walking back into the woods. And that's when Blaine would have scared you if he'd listened. And that's the fucking story. And for ah! once, I'm spooked. Haley actually did a spooky thing in like the five years we've been, been doing too spooky. spooky. I, uh, I, don't, I honestly didn't know where that was going to go because it's like a long as shit story. It was. That was very what, what the fuck was that shit? <laughs> was that Pongo? Where the fuck's Pongo? Wait, what? Is Pongo here? Thanks. That was fantastically told. Yeah. It was good. Thanks, we get a round dude. of applause for Miles Luna. Yeah. Right. Round of applause. I'm real drunk. Yeah. Yeah.